In a previous video, I discussed autoregressive or AR time series models. So I want to discuss the uh, other popular alternative in time series, the moving average or MA time series model. And in fact, you can combine the two and you can have these AR, MA um, models that look at the autoregressive and moving average um, as well. Now, before we start, I just want to clarify the terminology of moving average. So this time series moving average model should not be confused with calculating a moving average of a series of data. Okay, when you compute an n period moving average for some data, you average the first n observations. And then when the n plus 1 observation becomes available, you drop the first observation, use observations 2 through n plus 1. And I have a video that actually um, discusses this. It's pretty straightforward. It doesn't require a lot of um, high-tech math. It's just, you know, adding and division. It's just simple averages. And the reason this is done, it's to smooth the data. So you might see a stock price chart with a 50-day moving average um, overlaid over the actual price of the stock. And the way the first moving average value is computed is it's the average of, for example, observations 1 to 50. And then the second value would be the average of observations 2 through 51, etc. So when you get a new observation, you drop the oldest one, you add the newest one. So here I have a, a stock price chart of Apple and its 50-day moving average. And I got this from Yahoo Finance. And many of these sites allow you to get the stock price chart and to overlay things, like a 50-day moving average. Some of them allow you to pick the days you want. So you can have a 100-day moving average or a 30-day moving average. I happen to have 50. And you'll notice that this purple line here is the moving average and how much smoother it is than the actual stock price, which is very jaggedy. And it should be smoother because you're averaging over 50 days. And you'll notice that when you're above the moving average, it pulls the average up, so the slope is upward. When the observations are below the average, it pull, starts to bring the average down. So, you know, this can be popular you know, for technical analysts to get an idea of, you know, what sort of trend we happen to have, etc. So when we're looking at a time series moving average model, we also care about an average, but we're looking at it from a little different perspective. So a time series MA takes the mean or the average, and we'll call that mu, and moves it based on past errors. So a moving average model of order 1 would be, for example, yt equals mu of y, which is the average or the mean of y, plus some coefficient, we'll call it phi 1, times the error from the previous period. Okay, And then you're going to have an error in this period as well. And just like with the AR models, you, you're not limited to having only you know, one lagged, you know, error term or one lagged um, autoregressive term, you can have many. In the AR model, we use the, uh, we said it was of order P, here we use the term, uh, the letter Q. So you can have a moving average model of order Q, so again, you have the mean here, and then you have this coefficient times the first lag um, error term plus a different coefficient phi2, times the error term lag two periods, et cetera, et cetera, all the way out to lagged Q periods. So let's take a look at an example to get a better understanding of this. I, I saw this, you know, great example on the internet, which really helped to make it very understandable. It's quite simple. And so this is my version of it. So Suppose uh, your office is weekly at your office's weekly meeting. It's your job to bring the bagels. So every week, your boss lets you know the error you made in the number of bagels you brought. And let's say the mean number of bagels is a dozen, okay, 12. And let's say that that coefficient 
is one. Okay, point uh, um, that phi one, that coefficient is 0.5 or half. Okay, now I'm normally going to estimate it from the data, but here we're just going to toss it in as 0.5. It makes it really easy to do the math, and we're just trying to illustrate this so that you get a better understanding of what's going on. So here's the table, and so that first time period, you don't have any information, so you just bring 12 bagels, you bring the average. Your boss tells you, oops, made a mistake, you brought two you didn't bring enough, right? You should have brought two more. So you actually should have brought 14. You only brought 12. So in the next period, you're going to, again, start with the average of 12, but you're going to adjust the number of bagels you, you bring by half of the mistake you made last period. So you, you brought two, um, too few. So 0.5 times 2 is 1. So you're going to bring 12 plus 1. You're going to bring 13 bagels this time. This time you got it right, right? The actual number of bagels you needed was 13, so you got it perfect. So in time period 3, you start again with the average of 12, right? You take 0.5 times the error you made. You didn't make an error last time, so you just bring 12 bagels. Now in period 3, you brought too many, okay? You should have only brought 8, so you made an error of minus 4. So again, the adjustment's going to take place in the next period, in period 4. You're going to start with 12, and then you're going to take half of the mistake you made in, in time period 3, which was minus 4, so 0.5 times minus 4, so you brought, you're going to bring 2 less. So you're going to bring 10 bagels. Okay? In time period 4, your boss tells you, oops, you brought four too few. You should have brought 14. And again, so you're going to adjust next period. Start with the 12. You're going to take half of that mistake. And so you're going to bring 14. Okay. Again, you bring too many in time period 5. And you should have brought, instead of bringing 14, you should have only brought 12. So you made an error of minus 2. And again, we keep making that adjustment. The adjustment is based on the previous periods error term. So instead of bringing 12, we're going to adjust down by 1 and bring 11. Okay, got it perfect this time, so you make no adjustment here, but you made another mistake. Brought 12, should have only brought 10. Again, so you're going to reduce the amount you bring. Right, and you can continue this table forever. We stopped here at, at 8 time periods, so you know, 2 months of meetings. So Let's take a look at how this looks. Okay, what we notice is that these values, these are the actual number of bagels, 14, 13, 8, all right, um, I think 14 again, you got it perfect, 12, etc. They fluctuate around the mean of 12, right, or the average of 12. So that's why we call it a moving average. It's moving based on um, the past error terms. And you can see that, you know, this is something that can be used to, um, you know, model time series data. So this is another method that gets used in time series analysis. And there are a lot of programs, and uh, perhaps I'll do one of those, you know, that actually estimate AR and MA models and AR MA models as well. So I hope that provides at least a little intuition on what a moving average time series model is.